What's up everybody, after years of having gone without any notable story to their names, both Symmetra and Zenyatta undergo amazing character development in what is, without a doubt, the best Overwatch story we've gotten to date. Stone by Stone explores both these characters along with the Omnic Monks, Vishkar Corporation, and even delves deeper into the Iris by introducing us to Aurora, the first sentient Omnic. So today's video is going to be part one of a three-part analysis series of the latest Overwatch short story, and oh boy are there some amazing things to delve into. This is Master EN Gamer. Real quick, I'd like to remind you to subscribe and enlighten that bell icon if you enjoy this video, and consider hitting that join button down below to become a channel member and earn some cool rewards. But now, let's analyze Stone by Stone. So as I mentioned, this video is part one of what I'm currently planning to make a three-part analysis series. In this first part specifically, I'm going to delve into the core themes of Stone by Stone, as well as the character development for Symmetra and Zenyatta. In the other two parts, I'll be exploring the potential for new maps and heroes presented in this story. I'm looking at you, Sanjay Corporal, along with Aurora and everything new we learn about the Omnics and their sentience. So stay tuned for those videos if they aren't out already, and once they are, I'll be including links to them in both the video description and cards on screen. But anyways, getting back to this video, I'm going to start off by real briefly summarizing the events of Stone by Stone. If you haven't read it yourself already and would like to before hearing me spoil it, then I've included a link to it in the description down below. But now that you've been adequately warned, let's get on to the synopsis. The story starts with Satya Vaswani, aka Symmetra, Sanjay Corporal, as well as a handful of other Vishkar officials evaluating damage that has been done to an Omnic temple in India during some of their local construction work. Fearing that this incident could jeopardize their redevelopment efforts in the city, Sanjay tasks Symmetra with visiting the damaged temple to evaluate what must be done in order to fix their misdeed. Upon arriving at the temple, Symmetra is initially met with hostility from the locals, who disapprove of Vishkar's interloping and the damage it's caused. However, one of the Omnics welcomes her into the temple, and we soon learn that it is none other than everyone's favorite Omnic monk, Zenyatta. Zenyatta invites Symmetra to stay at the temple with himself and the other monks so that she can learn what they really need in order for Vishkar to repair the damage they've done. And despite her reservations, Symmetra agrees. Over the next few days, Symmetra comes to learn of the Omnics, their religion, and most importantly, Aurora, who, according to Zenyatta, was the first Omnic to achieve sentience. Through her time spent at the temple, Symmetra overcomes her personal struggles and learns the importance of connection between different people and the value of imperfection. After coming to a new understanding of herself, the Omnics, and the world, she is able to find a way to not only repair the damage dealt by Vishkar, but also leave her own lasting beneficial contribution to the temple and its occupants. Getting now into the analysis portion of the video, let's talk about the most important duo in this story, Symmetra and Zenyatta. As the cover and corresponding hero challenge implies, Symmetra is the focal character, but both her and Zen do get a decent amount of character development. So focusing on the story, as I mentioned in the synopsis, Symmetra is tasked with righting the wrongs of Vishkar by learning what it is that the Temple Omnics want as repayment. Sanjay specifically tasks her with this based on the fact that she's a talented hardlight architect and was born in a small town like the one in which they're currently working. However, Sanjay seems to disregard the fact that Symmetra is more than a little lacking in the people skills department. This is indicated early on in the short story by her struggling to pick up on metaphors and instead tending to take everything said by the people around her as being literal. Even though she's grown used to this struggle, she notes that it's still something she must constantly work through in her day-to-day -day life. Despite her subpar people skills, however, Symmetra is determined to fix the temple, and especially the statue of Aurora, whose broken form she regards as being so imperfect that she can hardly bear to look at it. This fixation on perfection has long been a core aspect of Symmetra as a character, both in-game and in story media. It's what makes her so at home within Vishkar, as it's their mission to perfect the world through sterile technology and order. It's why both Vishkar and Symmetra are so at odds with characters like Lucio, 
as they want to push order and efficiency over the individual freedoms of the people. And as one would imagine, both Symmetra's limited social skills and fixation on perfection come to a head with her mission in Stone by Stone. She's determined to fix, or rather perfect, the broken statue and temple, but is hindered from doing so by her lack of understanding of the temple residents and their religion. Yet, despite this impasse, she carries on to try and do what's right. And thus, enters Zenyatta. As I mentioned, Zenyatta's development in the story is lesser than that of Symmetra's, but he still has some wonderful moments. Overall, one of my favorite aspects of this short story is the chemistry between Symmetra and Zenyatta. These two characters, who previously had almost no interactions or connections whatsoever in the game and lore, actually mesh together remarkably well. Perhaps my favorite moment in the entire short story was when the two are able to immediately bond over their mutual struggle with metaphors. While it isn't stated outright in this short story, we've known since her 2016 comic that Symmetra is on the autism spectrum. Spectrum. This is more or less indicated to be the root cause behind her personal conflict within Stone by Stone, as it's the reason for both her limited social skills and fixation on perfection. And yet, despite the hardships it presents for her in her daily life, it actually helps her to connect with Zenyatta. Despite their physically and psychologically very different minds and independent life experiences, they both just so happen to tend to take words literally. This shared struggle allows them to relate to each other and, at least in the case of Symmetra, helps her to feel a bit more understood. But on top of how this connection affects just these two characters, it's also a great analogy for how we can view Omnic's sentience as a whole within the Overwatch universe. Comparing Omnix to Symmetra's autism as a way of portraying how their minds aren't necessarily better or worse, but simply different, really stuck with me as a genius way of explaining Omnic sentience. Not only does it help to explain the idea of Omnic consciousness, which again is something I'll be delving into much more later in this video series, but also ties in perfectly with the themes of this story. As Zenyatta states a little later on, we don't need to understand someone in order to love them or be their friend. And at least within the Overwatch universe, this is a great way of explaining how humans and Omnics can be so fundamentally different but still find harmony with each other. However, focusing back on Symmetra's specific journey, over the course of the story we see her confront many of her personal hardships head on. She's forced to break her comforting routine in order to stay at the temple and learn about the Omnics, and even wears their robes as a sign of her commitment to her mission. She has to try and connect with and understand people who are not only fundamentally different from her, but in many cases despise her because of that difference. And all the while, Zenyatta passively helps by being her teacher. At no point does he ever force Symmetra to do anything, but rather merely guides her down the path she herself is willing to take. Ultimately, Zenyatta ends up teaching her to understand connection itself and appreciate the flaws that exist inherently within everyone and everything. By learning these things, Symmetra is able to connect with others even when she doesn't understand them, and finds comfort in knowing that things aren't perfect. These ideas stand in stark contrast to Vishkar and their domineering, order-obsessed practices. But even with her realization of her employer's shortcomings, and a rather somber moment when she wishes that she could have learned these lessons before ever joining Vishkar, Symmetra ultimately ends up using her newfound understandings in conjunction with the tools she wields as an architect to not just fix what had been broken, but enhance it. Rather than abandoning her position within Vishkar in light of her enlightenment, she instead melds her understanding of the two in a way no one on either side ever thought possible. Only by using what she learned from both Vishkar and the Omnix was Symmetra capable of restoring the statue of Aurora by creating her imperfect masterpiece. Much like the chemistry between Zenyatta and Symmetra, this part in particular was something which really stuck with me after reading the short story. You'd be hard pressed to find two groups within the Overwatch universe who are more diametrically opposed than Vishkar and the Omnic Monks, and yet Symmetra was capable of connecting them in a way that was mutually beneficial. Vishkar retained their redevelopment rights for the city, and the monks got a beautiful new temple that reflected their ideologies in a way that could not have been achieved without hard light technology. While going forward, it's unlikely that these two groups will ever see each other as friends, so to say, I once again loved seeing the story's theme of connection without understanding being reflected in the way these two groups ended up being brought together. 
But once again, focusing on Symmetra specifically, perhaps the most amazing thing about this story with regards to her as a character is the fact that she actually undergoes a character arc. Overwatch's story overall is notorious for its characters being too static, with the vast majority of character arcs taking place prior to the events of current day and only ever being explored in flashback style scenarios. But Stone by Stone is set in present day on the Overwatch timeline, and in it, Symmetra undergoes a legitimate arc where she kinda changes as a person. So then, what does that mean for her character going forward, most notably when it comes to Overwatch 2? Well, it's certainly possible that we could see her character in Overwatch 2 being a bit different from how she is in game now. If anything, I'd expect her new hero look to reflect the changes she underwent in this story, either by switching up her colors to reflect the robes she wore in the temple, or some other little details to represent her character growth. Sure, we already technically got this with the new skin and her corresponding hero challenge, but it'd still be nice to see the events of the story reflected in her Overwatch 2 appearance. Beyond a change in appearance though, Symmetra likely won't change too much in all honesty. I mean, at the end of Stone by Stone, Symmetra is still Symmetra. She'll still face the social challenges she did before, with the main difference being her newfound confidence and inner peace. It's even specified that she'll still continue to work for Vishkar. While Symmetra's mentality and outlook may have changed, who she is as a person fundamentally has not. In fact, if anyone undergoes a true radical change in the story, it may actually end up being Sanjay, but again, I'll be focusing on him more in a separate video in this series. So while I don't expect Symmetra specifically to be a massively changed character in the story or game of Overwatch 2, I do hope we see some evidence of her journey present in her personality and voice lines in the sequel. And if nothing else, I'm just glad that Blizzard finally gave us something good and new in the hero story department. This new story has been an absolute breath of fresh air amidst the content drought, and honestly, for the first time in a while, I'm feeling genuinely optimistic about the story of Overwatch. There is so much I love about this short story, and I desperately hope that this is only the first of many more great Overwatch stories to come. But that'll do it for part one of my stone by stone analysis. Once the other parts in this video series are uploaded, I'll have links to them both in the description and cards on screen, so be sure to check them out for all the juicy details on Sanjay, Aurora, and the Iris. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit up that bell icon, follow me on Twitter if you enjoyed this video, and don't want to miss any of my future Overwatch content. Special thanks to my YouTube channel members who help make these videos possible, and if you'd like to join them to earn some cool rewards, then just hit that join button down below. Today's comment question, what did you think of Symmetra and Zenyatta's character development in the new short story? Let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, this is Master EN Gamer signing off, and until next time, have a great day.